You are standing in a Pullman combine car that was built in the year 1900 for the Hocking Valley Railroad in Ohio and later transferred to the Chesapeake in Ohio Railroad. The term combine was short for a combination car that served both as a passenger coach and a baggage car. Coaches like this were used on branch lines and countryside routes where passengers were few. This particular combine car retains segregated or separate sections for African American and white people. Please notice the buttons in front of you and follow along while I explain. Behind you is the baggage section. In this open area, passengers' bags as well as packages and light freight were carried through country towns and stations along the route. Please push and hold the blue button. The lighted cabin before you was the main passenger cabin of this combine car. Please note the rich paneling, stenciled and decorated ceiling, mirror, and the gold leaf lettering. All of this was typical of railroad passenger coaches at the turn of the 20th century. Railroads strove to provide elegant accommodations that were decorated according to the fashion of the day. This cabin, however, was reserved for white and well-to-do passengers only. Please push and hold the green button. The middle compartment of this combine car was known as a partition section. Throughout the last decades of the 19th century and well into the 20th century, many railroads strictly enforced racial segregation laws forcing African-American travelers to sit in separate but not equal sections. Please note that while the seats are the same in both sections, this compartment lacks much of the rich detail and decoration found in the white compartment. Smoking was also permitted in this section for both white and African-American passengers, thus contributing to an uncomfortable atmosphere. Racial segregation laws enacted in the late 19th century were known as Jim Crow laws, believed to be named after a song and dance parody of African-Americans called Jump Jim Crow that surfaced in the 1830s. Over the years, railroad coaches like this were known as Jim Crow coaches. The first instance that challenged Jim Crow travel accommodations was not Rosa Parks on a Montgomery bus in the 1950s, but rather a shoemaker by the name of Homer Plessy who took his case to court after being forced to ride in a black compartment on a Louisiana railroad coach in the 1890s. Plessy lost his case. However, the stage was set for decades of social and political argument over racial segregation in America. The official end to racial segregation and Jim Crow practices in the United States came with the Congress's passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964.